The Adafruit touchscreens were top of the line for Arduino touchscreens, or so I thought. The touchscreen I have here is the 2.8 inch LCD with capacitive touch, and I have the breakout version from Adafruit. It runs about $40. They also offer this in a shield version for about $45. What really drew me to this display is that it has a capacitive touchscreen. Now what that means is the screen is this nice smooth glass like the modern smartphones. Some of you may remember the older smartphones where you had to use your nail or a stylus to activate the touchscreen. Well, modern smartphones don't need that because they just detect the capacitance of your finger press and that's how this screen works. Now I love the capacitive touch of this screen. It feels great and it responds well, but this thing is a pain in the butt to code. Here's the code for the project I just had loaded on the screen. And as you can see, it is about a thousand lines of code. Now all this project really does is get the temperatures of six different thermistors and that is all of the code for it right there. So why is it a thousand lines? Well, the majority of the code is to make the touchscreen display the interface that you want it to display. Additionally, there's no centering function, there's no preview button or anything like that that will give you any determination of what your interface will look like before you upload it. So all these values here, you have to pretty much find by trial and error. And I thought this is just how Arduinos were with touchscreens and just displays in general. If I wanted a better interface, I would just buy a Raspberry Pi. That was until I found the Nextian screens and the Nextian editor. Instead of coding the touchscreen line by line, you were able to use this program here to create your interface so you know exactly what it's going to look like way before you upload it to the device. They call this a what you see is what you get editor and what that means is exactly what it sounds like. When you run the simulator what you see and do on here is exactly what it's going to be like when you upload it to the screen. Speaking of which, here is the display. I have the 3.5 inch enhanced version. Basically the difference between the basic and the enhanced is the enhanced has a much faster processor so it can load screens, images, and just get data faster. It's also got a battery holder on the back here for a real-time clock, but from what I read, it's not very accurate, so you're probably not gonna re wanna rely on that. Now the enhanced version is not much more than the basic version, and for the faster speeds, I would definitely recommend the enhanced version. So here I have the screen on, and as you can see, it is up and running, and there is no Arduino attached anywhere. Everything you see here is being done completely by the screen itself and none of it requires the Arduino. So basically in the editor on the computer you can export a .tft file to a micro SD card. You plug the micro SD card slot in here, you unplug and plug it back in to let it uh, take the software update and voila now you've got what you exactly what you had made on your computer on the screen Now the screen can communicate with an Arduino through the serial pins That's how the screens are able to send and receive data from the Arduino from sensors and other things like that But what that means is that you only need two pins from your Arduino and there's a very low load on the Arduino So if memory or processing power is an issue for you, which it usually is with Arduinos Then this is a good bet for high quality graphics. So as you can see comparing two different buttons. The continue button on the Adafruit touchscreens or most standard Arduino touchscreens is pretty basic. It's just a rectangle with a white border and of course you can change the colors but the text you had to center it yourself. Uh, that's a lot of guessing and checking all that stuff. As you can see the buttons on here they look pretty nice. When I press them they change. and they just look better in general. So what's the secret to making cool looking graphics? I've even got some radios here and if I tap them I can turn the radio on. And as you can see the screen lights up, the knobs turn, and you turn them on and off. Well, it's all designed in Photoshop. Okay, not really Photoshop. I'm using GIMP, which is basically Photoshop, but it's a free uh, software and it works just as well in my opinion and the way I make buttons is first I make the entire screen just one big picture of Everything off 
then I just make another layer with it on. And basically all what happens with the screen is when you push the button, is it just switches the two pictures. Now the Adafruit touchscreens can draw BMP files, but they take a really long time and you can actually watch it go down line by line. That's how slow it is. As you can see when I touch this, barely any lag, you don't really notice it, it just looks like it's turning on and off. So memory on the Arduino boards is also a concern. When I was making the one with the old Adafruit touchscreen, I couldn't use an Arduino Uno anymore because I ran out of space. Uh, this sketch here uses 35,000 bytes, which is only 13% of the Mega, but it was so high on the storage of the Arduino Uno that it was causing stability issues. So I updated it to the Nextian display and now it only uses 22,000 bytes, which is 72% of an Arduino Nano, but now I can use an Arduino Nano. Now the Arduino Nanos are much smaller and cheaper. I got this for about $3, whereas the same Smart Mega that I'm using with this was around $18. Now there are a couple drawbacks to this screen. Now looking at the two screens side by side, you might notice that the Nextian looks a little bit washed out and it doesn't look quite that washed out looking at it in person. I would have adjusted the lighting to make it look like what it actually looks like in real life. Another thing you'll note about the Nexteons is they are very dependent on the angle that you look at them from. If you look at them from a high angle like this, they look pretty bad and then they get more accurate to the color as you go down this way. Whereas the Adafruit screen, it looks exactly the same no matter what angle you're looking at it from. So basically what I've done is I've recreated the, this project with the Nextian. Now this one took me about two months to build, but I was able to learn from scratch how to use these Nextians within about two days. And that's because the majority of the stuff you do with the Nextian I have made in GIMP. And it's just switching pictures quickly is really all it's doing. So I'll walk you through all the screens on both these projects. But before I do, I'll let you know that the sensors are not hooked up, so they're going to read wacky values. It's just to see the different uh, graphics that you get with each screen. So I'll go ahead and press continue on here. And I did add a green effects. Oops, I accidentally did it twice. But as you can see, everything is rectangular. The text is pretty blocky. Buttons work, yes. Not super fancy. And if I do the same with the Nextian, I was able to get some rounded buttons here. Again, made those in the photo editor. Works the same way. Now here's the main screen where it reads all the temperatures. Uh, as you can see, it's doing some wacky values because none of the sensors are connected. So the numbers change colors based on what temperature they are. And they both do export this data through USB to PLXDAQ, which is a macro for Excel, and it allows you to do live graphing, which I think is pretty cool. But you can see the different settings buttons. This is some standard rectangular button, whereas I was able to use a picture of a gear for the settings button on here. And when I press it, it turns gray, release it, and it changes. This one, just a standard, it turns green first and then loads the next page. So I think this menu screen really shows the difference in what it's able to do. Everything here is just a flat color. Everything's rectangular. There is a slider for brightness. Changes the brightness of it. It's very basic. But on the Nextian screen, you're allowed to use pictures. So everything looks very nice. Slider also works. Hard to see it changing brightness on camera, but it is changing brightness. Toggle buttons, go back and forth. Different buttons to load the menus. I've even got an about page with a QR code, which is pretty cool. So in summary, the Nextian screen is much easier to program, easier to create exactly what you want because it's done in Photoshop or any other photo editor. You get much nicer results 
and the Arduino barely has to do anything. I think it's a great improvement and a great step up in the quality of Arduino projects. And if you couple it with something like an ESP32, which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, now you're starting to compete with the Raspberry Pi, I think, and you can make some pretty good looking graphics. That's it for this video. If you guys want to see more videos on the Nextian display, more tutorials, or just more electronic stuff in general, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Like, subscribe, really helps out the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.